Next, Sean. Hello. Everybody love Raymond community. Hello. Welcome to Sunday. We are live answering all of the questions of the community. We are going to be talking to Ralph today. Ralph Avalos, who is the key hairstylist, which means he was the head of the hair department. And once Ralph joins, I will plug in my fancy microphone and we'll talk. Hello, Donnell. Hello, Noah. Hello, Kathy. Hello, everybody. Oh, there is Ralph. Hello, Ralph. Hey, Tom. How are you, man? I am good. Let me just plug in my mic here. Okay. Oh, you threw a blazer on. A blazer. Uh, 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 Ralph, uh, yes, uh, for you, Ralph. How, how could I not look stylish for you? Ralph. So, so Ralph, at the beginning, uh, I like to say hi to people so you don't get into a story yes. and then we get cut off. So let's see. Let's see. Hello, Princess Christine 67. Uh, not a Christine we know. Uh, hello, Karen. Yes, saying hello to Ralph with a wave and a British flag. She is in the United Kingdom. Uh, Ralph, hello, we have a big... England. Yes, we have a big audience in England and a big audience in Australia. So it's late at wow. night in England, yeah, and a small uh, uh, early in the morning in Australia. I thought um, it was right. the East Coast in Russia. <laughs> um, by the way, there are some. Hello, Nettie, Paul Print. Hello. Yes. Hello, Leo in Toronto. Hello, Harrison, New York. Uh, not far. Harrison is not far from where. Phil Rosenthal is from. Really? Yes. So, so uh, Ralph. Yes. Um, oh, someone named Derek. It feels like Derek. Do you know a Derek? Because he's saying you are handsome and you have great hair. Must be <laughs> an anonymous. Oh, that is your husband, Ralph. Correct. Okay. Uh, he's over, well, he's over there. Okay. Well, I'm not going to disagree with. Uh, Derek, you are looking good today, and Thank of you. course, uh, good hair. So a little shiny. So, do you want? Do you want me to see if Aaron Kruger uh, <laughs> can come by? Um, yes, Christine. So, so um, Ralph, yeah. what I've done on this in the past, um, uh, I'm always interested in everybody's job on the show because, and I think the audience here is shocked that it's 130 people to make a show happen. And at any point, someone can drop the ball and it can ruin something in the show. So all the, hello, Christine, um, uh, your, fellow, your fellow hair person. No uh, makeup, she was makeup. I mean, sorry, makeup. So yeah. she's in that photo that I posted. Christine, she's saying hi to me, Ralph, not to you. I don't mm -hmm. know if that means anything, but. Um, so everybody at any point, and Seinfeld says this, it, to make a show, it's like running across a room holding an egg on a spoon. At any point, like something that. can fail. And <clears throat> uh, so getting deep, these are fans that know the show, unfortunately, better than you and I ever will. Because yep. we, made, we made the show, but then we didn't watch it a hundred times. So right. any facts about episodes, uh, they will tell you. So, Ralph, let's just talk about how you got into the business. Oh, wow. That, that's kind of a... It's actually a good story. I'll make it short. I lived in Venice Beach, California. And at the time, around the corner was a studio called Roger Corman Studios. Okay. And they were sort of um, a B-movie, you know, Attack of the Killer Tomato and odd stuff like that. But a lot of people got their start there. A lot of big actors like Jack Nicholson and <clears throat> Sharon Stone. And anyway, literally had nothing to lose. I had my license as a hairdresser. I knocked on the door and said, how do I get a job in the hair department? They said, well, we don't have a job in the hair department, but can you paint? So I said, yeah, I can paint. So I started <laughs> painting sets for maybe the, they, 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 they knocked out a movie every four weeks. So I started like set dressing, painting sets, doing stuff like that. And about the third movie, so about 12 weeks in, they said, we have a hair position. Do you want to, we're going to give you the hair position. So that's how I started. 
Um, so I got my first hair job on a film and, you know, first time I read a script and had to break it down and by character and by day and night and da, da, da. And, so and, Ralph, yes. sorry. When they say, just for the people watching, so Roger Corman was the king of B-movies, like Ralph said, so they crank him out fast. So in four weeks is unheard of. So what it allowed is a lot of people to be featured in a movie, because usually a movie is yes. 12 months in planning, and then they shoot, you know, so this was great for, for people. And, and I think Quentin Tarantino was Correct. in that mix. So uh, when they said, can you, paint, can you paint, it's not, can you, are you a fine artist? They're saying, can you pick up a paintbrush and paint? A so, roller and roll out some flat walls. Right. I'm so like, do you can do that? Right. But do you think they're testing you to find out if you're a little bit of a prima donna and you're like, I don't paint. I'm a, a hairstylist. Or did they just need someone to paint? I think they just needed somebody to paint. Yeah. And I happen to have a hair license. I had to show them my license, you know, because everything, you know, you, to work in the film business, to work on a studio lot, you know, which was not Roger Corman. Uh, like Warner Brothers or Paramount, you have to be in the union, in a local, uh, it's called the hair and makeup union. So uh, that was non-union stuff. So, you know, pretty much anybody could walk in and do something, I think. Right. Uh, I just happened to knock on the door and they said, can you paint? I said, yes. And, and then they gave me the hair position. It was... So, cool. so it's the first time you're reading a script. So now you have to, from a hair perspective, how do you even have the confidence to go, oh, I'll be able to do anything they throw out me? No, throw at me. I had no clue whatsoever. <laughs> They're like, you know, that's a match, you know, because we shot a scene on a Monday and then Friday we picked up the end of that scene because nothing's ever shot in order. And, you know, of course, I did a different hairdo because it just was a different day. And, the, and I quickly learned, though. I, I made very few mistakes, but enough to really go, okay, I really need to figure this out. And, and I did, I didn't make a mistake after that. I've made some sense like on Everybody Loves Raymond a couple of times, but uh, ask Phil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we'll get, we'll get to Phil and the whole, and the show. <clears throat> yeah. But so now, but did you like the environment? Because you're being in the movies, as you know, but for people that aren't in the business, yeah. it's a very nomadic, insecure, there's nothing guaranteed. There's a chance that that could be your last job ever. Uh, so did you enjoy being on the set and that whole environment? Because it's high I, pressure. I absolutely loved it. I mean, I was surrounded by, you know, wardrobe people, prop people. I mean, everything seemed creative to me. And, and I must say, you know, something to be said for youth. You know, I had nothing to lose. I had no money. I was making, I remember $800 a week you know, working probably, I'd say 60 to 70 hours a week, you know, 12, 16 hour days. And I didn't care. I didn't need much sleep then. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't care. I, yeah. I, I have the best time. I really, really did. Made some great friends. Um, yeah. It was so, then, so then you do your first movie. Yes. And then is it, are you with Roger Corman for a while? or I believe I did three pictures with him. And then I ended up getting some no other non-union stuff outside of Roger Corman. And uh, I'm just going to cut to, I ended up doing a non-union movie with um, Rodney Dangerfield and Debbie Mazur, if anybody knows her. She's an actress and she was also a makeup artist back in the day in New York. And, uh, and she, and so I did a non-union movie that went union. Oh. So he's like, you know, the union comes in and makes a non-union movie, non-union movie turn union. And you have to have a certain amount of hours to be able to join that now union movie. And I did not have enough. I was short like by 30 hours or something like that. Long story short, Debbie Mazur, who's an actress, uh, got a pilot for CBS after that. And she star requested me, it's called a star request. So she basically, I, that's how I got in the union, was I was a star request by Debbie Mazur. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's, so I, I love this, Ralph, because this is all, uh, this is all news to me. And yeah. she was in uh, um, 
what what is the hit series that she was in? The uh, Younger is the last thing she was in, uh, I believe. Yeah. But Will and Grace was Will and Grace her big? Was she in Will and Grace? No. No. no okay. No. 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 Uh, also, oh God, Entourage. She was in Entourage. Entourage. Okay. And Younger was her last thing. Uh, she had a cooking show too called. Um, Oh gosh! Oof. I'm not. I'm just, just Did she have an Italian oh. husband? Did she have an Italian? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So I remember seeing that cooking show as well. Well, that, so that's. She used to be a, a makeup artist herself and was best uh, Madonna's best friend. She was Madonna's makeup artist. You know, back in the early early eighties. Um, she's been around. You know, she she's got a, a neat resume. She's she's pretty artsy. Yeah. Yeah. Been around in a good way. I, I just want to clarify. Right, right. <laughs> Been around in a good way. Yeah, yeah. So, so now she and when when you find out that because uh, just for people watching, also the yep. unions run everything. So me not right. meaning if it's union or non-union, it's a definitive split. So if you're union, you can't really do non-union anymore. You can. You're you're asked not to, but you know. Yeah, you know, if I was going to lose my home and needed to pay my mortgage, you know, you, you do whatever you're going to do. But, uh, you know, you, you try to stay union and, you know, also being union, um, you know, you get your medical benefits, a retirement, you know, a lump sum, you know, when you reach 30 years and, you know, it has all the benefits as a as a union gives you. you know? Yeah, uh, just because I don't want to get too far past yeah. some of these questions, Leo yeah. asks a very good question. Going back to Roger Corman, yes. how long would you have just painted before you said, you know what, I really am a hairdresser. We're now nine I months think in. I did one movie, four weeks, let's just say, painting sets and set dressing. That means like if there's a bar scene, you know, you dress the bar, you know, you know, glasses half full, glasses of right. bourbon, you know, and then you have to reset it every take. Right. From but... I think Leo's question is, what if they said, Ralph, you're not doing hair so fast. We're going to make you paint for nine months. Would you have been like, ah? Uh. I, I would have, yeah, I would have been a little like, I'm a hairdresser. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wanted to do hair. Yeah, yeah great. Um, the uh, different for the character style. Yes. Okay. So but I, I'm going to, I can scroll back and see these questions. I'm just looking, uh, yes, Entourage and the Cooking Show with her husband. Thank you, Nettie Pauprin. Yes. Uh, oh, sorry. I was thinking of Deborah Messing. Yes, thank you, Donnell, in, uh, in whatever. Yes, Debbie Mazur. I was going to say that, but yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So now she gets you in without having the appropriate... Did you even know that was a possibility? I, I've never heard of that, the star I, I, request. I did. I did know that was a possibility. I didn't know it was going to happen to me. I didn't know she was going to get a pilot after that movie wrapped. Um, uh, I did not know. And, and I, you know, she called me and said, listen, I star requested you. I actually, I wish I would have uh, brought it with me. Um, I have the letter that she wrote the producers uh, and the producers then turned it over to the union and star requested me. And um, here's a kind of a cool fact too. It was $1,200 to join the union. I had no money. <laughs> I somehow scraped it up. I think a friend of mine lent me like four hundred dollars. You know, now it's, it's so it was twelve hundred dollars to join. I ended up scraping it up somehow, some way. Uh, now it's six thousand dollars to join the union. Yeah, you can't if you're getting in the union. It's six thousand dollars now to join. The union. So just so uh, just for the parallel, as yeah. a writer, I was non-union. Nor, yeah. nor was Ray starting on Everest Raymond, and so the moment I was. There's a point where you have to join the union. Right. And it was the same type of thing. They go, okay, I don't remember the exact amount, but it was something like, okay, now you can join the union, give us $4,000 or right. something. And I was like, oh, really? Do I have to spend $4,000? Because I had no money. You know, I was started to, but I was like, oh boy, that's a little, uh, you know, maybe I'll just go non-union. You know what's funny is that I don't think I've ever heard a story of anybody getting in the union that initially had money. <laughs> I just had it laying around, you know. Yes, I don't remember. I don't think I've ever heard that story. You know? Yes, <laughs> yes, four thousand dollars laying around. Ah, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Here you go. Oh, I was yeah. wondering what was I going to do with this four K. Am I making this out too? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know so, anybody like that. <laughs> so now, uh, Ralph, you're, you've you've done Deborah uh, Debbie Mazer's show. Yeah, that doesn't it doesn't go. It's a pilot. Um, it was a pilot. I think it went like a cup. Yeah, it got cut short. It was called, it was a really cute concept. I have to say it was called Temporarily Yours. And uh, she was a temp. 
So every episode, she was in a new job. And the antics that sort of went on with that. You know, it was, right. It was a multi-camera sitcom. Um, I remember it was shot on um, the nanny's set. On their hiatus. Yeah. Oh. We used their stage. And um, I don't know if it was Culver or Sony or something like that. But. Yeah, it was, it was Sony because the first year of, of Raymond, Ray did a guest appearance on the nanny for those of you that don't know oh, the nanny. I didn't know that. yeah it was fran drescher was started in the nanny it was a hit show here in america um i don't know if it's playing around the world uh, at all but ray did a guest spot and i went down and helped um and I, I remember thinking wow this is a real show like this isn't up in you know because it, it was on a big yeah. lot uh um so now and i think just to paint the picture because when we're talking about every brother's raymond and we're going to get to where you get to there it's a giant hit. So now we're 15 years out from it. And, and it's like, well, it's always a giant hit. So you've experienced, and I've said this many times, most shows don't go. Most things fail. Everything, you know, everything uh, usually doesn't work out. I would say 90% of pilots don't I go. I would say I would agree with that big time. Yep. Yeah. So now uh, you're, you're in the union. Yes. We're now, where, where are we? Uh, 90 Two ninety three. No, I got in in ninety four. Oh, okay. Ninety four, so, ninety five. Yes. Okay, and for people watching, Everose Raymond started in ninety six. Correct. Which, um, so, so now you're in the union. Now you're working. What is your next project? So I'm in the union. I meet a makeup artist, Aaron uh, Kruger at the time. Now McCash. If you're around, Aaron. Yeah. And Erin's um, done this. Erin's been on here. So people have yes. met her. Yeah. Uh, so she was a friend of a friend and we met and she, we did a pilot. Sabrina, the teenage witch was the pilot. Okay. And I got, uh, I was the hairdresser on it. Department head hairdresser with a, another girl named Colleen LaBeouf, who's still a very successful hairdresser in the business. Um, I got on it and it, like you said earlier, it was one of those pilots that went. That yeah. Not picked up. And one of the few. And just for a, a frame of reference, I, again, you know, said I, I, I was broke at the time and in my, you know, middle to late 20s. And I went from like maybe $25,000 a year to like $85,000 a year. And at that time, that was pretty great, you know. That's, that's pretty good now still. Yeah, yeah, it changed my life. I mean, it just <laughs> changed my life. And I got my own place, and I bought a car, and, you know, all that good stuff. And, um, and Ralph, so that was my first union show was Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Wow. And, Ralph, let me just ask you, because I don't know the yeah. answer, uh, and maybe it was just that one, but uh, uh, in, in the writing world and in the production world, very often people will do m many pilots in this like yes. one month period. So did you do any other pilots that season? Oh, wow, I don't remember. I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay, so uh, uh, yeah. So what I was gonna say is for people watching, uh, when you do uh, in this off season, you have multiple pilots often that some people do. And yes. then you have to pick if the sh let's say Ralph did a couple, he would have to pick, hey, Sabrina's going on the air or Evers Raymond. And you might go, I have to choose potentially because because a hairdresser can work on multiple shows at the same time. Really only in the sitcom world, you can do that because it, we sitcom usually shoots like two days a week, three days a week for hairdressers. Right. Um, you know, you guys work five days a week, you know, actors and Produ yeah. production um you know and, and funny enough tom i don't know if you know this i actually had to choose between sabrina and raymond so i had done sabrina i believe a couple of seasons like four oh you said 96 so maybe three seasons of sabrina and then so sabrina shot monday tuesday wednesdays raymond shot thursday friday so for a while i had two shows which you know has always been i've been lucky enough most of my career to have two shows uh, two sitcoms uh, at a time. So, uh, but then I believe Raymond, everybody loves Raymond, switched their shooting days to like Monday, Tuesday or something. I can't quite remember the exact days, but I yeah. remember I had to choose. So I gave up Sabrina the Teenage Witch and went with Raymond. 
Oh, I did not know that. I did not know that. So, uh, yeah, just for people watching, and they're familiar now with the multi-camera world versus the single camera world. And the multi-camera world, the cameraman, the hair department, certain people only had to work two days a week. So they could, if the other shows lined up, take two jobs. That's the dream is yeah. to be able to you know, work in multiple jobs. Most so now, of my career, I had a Monday, Tuesday, and a Thursday, Friday. Yes, two that's, shows. That's phenomenal. That's just bragging, Ralph. That's just bragging. So now, so let's go right. These are huge Everless Raymond fans. So now, let's talk about how you get the call to go to Raymond. So I, through Aaron, once again, uh, makeup extraordinaire. I think she has like 12 Emmys now. I'm not joking. Um, uh, she said uh, she was on Everybody Loves Raymond the first season. I came in the second season. So before I came in, though, she said Patricia Heaton wanted somebody to do her hair. She wasn't happy with a person, and I'm not going to name names for the obvious reasons. Right. Um, so I had did a little test run with Patty. She was doing some event. So I went to her house, and I did her hair. And she liked me, we got along great, and she liked what I did. And so I basically got the job. So the first, my first season, which was the second season of Everybody Loves Raymond, I came in as a personal to Patricia Heaton. And is that, sorry, Ralph, is that a normal thing where a star can say, I want this person? And, and it, you're it, on the. Yes, it, it, it's not I, normal. I don't know if that's the right word, but um, yes, you can read. A quest, you know, a, a lot of productions these days, you know, don't really like to do that so much. But uh, back then, yes, it, uh, Patty was the female lead on a show, so she requested her own hair first, and so I got the job. So I came in as a personal to hair uh, to Patty Eaton, uh, second season, and uh, the third season, the next season, I ended up becoming a department head hairdresser. Um, so yeah, that first season, here I have a uh, really cool, this was my first day on set with Patty Heaton, second season. Um, here's a picture, you could see, if I'm holding it oh, up. That's great. Yeah, yeah, we can see it perfectly. That's great, Ralph. And where <laughs> is that? What, is that Dancing with Deborah? No. I think so. It was like at some club or they Yes. Were, yeah, I mean, I remember. Oh yeah, I, that's. I did a little bit of a period hairstyle on her. Uh, she had like sort of a vintage dress on, but that was my first day with Patty Heaton on Everybody Loves Raymond set. Wow, that's that that's a big one. Yes, Dancing with Deborah. Uh, Ralph, yeah. someone is asking, and I don't know the power structure because it's um, everything. As I've explained to people, everything has to go through Phil, but. Uh, the line producer was Lisa, let's say Lisa Helfrich, just for, you know, Lisa's been on here. But yep. the non-creative, which is not a good demean, not a good uh, uh, way yeah. of describing it, sounds like they're non-creative. But sounds like Phil, they're boring. Yes. <laughs> Phil, <laughs> Phil makes, uh, Phil can't make every decision because nor should he have to go, okay, I think we need the, the B camera focus puller should be, it's too much responsibility for him. So did you have to get approved by Lisa or Phil or was it below their radar, do you think? Um, I, I, Phil always had something to say, you know, about um, hair. Right. Uh, which, you know, I really respected and appreciated. I have to say, you know, my sort of um, way of working and probably just my personality was uh, a little stubborn and a little, I would always sneak a, a little <laughs> bit more glamour in than probably what was, you know, written and for her character as a housewife. And Yeah. And well, let- and we, 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 you know, I got called yeah. in a few times. Uh, Let's myself. get to that, Ralph. Let's get yeah. to that because that's a big discussion. So, um, uh, oh, here's a comment. I love how you did Patty's hair. Always noticed it. Yes. So now you're made the department head. So the person that the person's no longer there that that wasn't uh, Patty wasn't happy with doing hair. Uh, so now right. you're the department head of this show. You've given up Sabrina. Yeah. Right. And 
now you're, uh, and I want to ask you this, uh, the environment that you work in, okay, is very key. Like you've probably worked on shows where the showrunner is not so fun to be around. So Correct. what did, what, what was that like getting to feel like, oh, this is a safe, fun place? Like, what was your initial? I just, I mean, everybody was, you know, <clears throat> everybody was super welcoming, super lovely. I, I liked that. Um, I think for, for me, what, what was great was that I was a personal to Patty. So by the time I came to Apartment Head, the, the third season, I, you know, everybody knew me and it was, uh, you know, I think we everybody has a, a great mutual respect for everybody's department. You know, we're all a craft, you know, e even down to the food people, you know, everybody is, um, they're, yep. own, they're, you know, they specialize in something. So um, it was wonderful. It changed my life. I mean, in the, in so many ways, you know, yeah. I bought my first home on that show. Yeah. Um, it was, it was amazing. Yeah. And yeah. So, I made great money. I mean, the money was fantastic. Yeah. Stop talking about the money, Ralph, because I'm going to ask to borrow some from you if you keep telling me. <laughs> how. So, Ralph, just because it's a, it's a question that keeps coming up. Yeah. Uh, Doris had somebody that did her hair. Um, that was so, uh, when I was department head, yes, there was another, it's called a key, you know, I was department head hair, and then there's key hair. Right. Uh, and she had the key hair person do her hair. She did not have a personal. Uh, right. Okay. Somebody was, you know, assigned to her. I did Ray and Patty, and my key did uh, Peter, Doris, and Brad. Great. And so, and what was it, Kathy, at the beginning? Doing it was Kathy Corrakis, okay. who's no longer with us. Right. 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 She, she was a wonderful, lovely woman. I yes. I still so, think about her today. Yeah. So I'm going to post the picture. So there's a question of. Um, there's a question of, cause now I want to get into some specific hair stuff because yep. what somebody commented on, and I agree is Patty's hair. Now, you know, it's funny. We don't even mention Ray cause Ray's a guy and it's like, okay, yep. let's, yeah, there you go, Ray, just get in there and do your lines. But Patty has to fulfill a role of being a, um, uh, a, a put upon housewife who doesn't have a second to do anything with her hair. Two, looking a, like a very appealing, you know, uh, 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 person. So you're walking this tightrope rope between what is it like to be a put upon housewife yeah. and what is it like to be a sexy, you know, star of a show, you know, right. as, as a, a woman, woman of a show, which brings us to what we were talking about before with Phil, because Phil, and I'm going to, I've said this before on the show, if you watch Exporting Raymond, uh, he gets into an argument when he's doing the show in Russia with the wardrobe lady. And so the, I wardrobe, so related. Yeah. <laughs> so the wardrobe woman says to Phil Rosenthal, the showrunner of the show, and for those of you who have worked on the show, the idea of, for example, a wardrobe woman uh, giving gruff to the, head, to the head of the show is incomprehensible because it just doesn't happen. That doesn't mean Phil doesn't want to go, Ralph, what do you think about the hair? He does, but yeah. not Phil. But if Ralph got into Phil's face and going, let me tell you something, Patty Heaton needs her hair and I'm not going to hear anything else. It would be like, hey, what happened to Ralph? Where was his? Oh, his last day was today. So uh, in that dynamic, Phil in Russia is saying, listen, she wants to look glamorous. She's on TV, but she's a housewife. So now yeah. you are faced with reality of t t explain that that balance. Okay, so well, hold on, hold on, Ralph. I'm going to interrupt you in a rude way. No, I'm no. going to take, I'm going to take a sip just so you, yeah, Be Phil. Be yes, Phil. Just, just, yeah, just so you know, Phil's in the room. I it, it, let me start by saying, and I'm not just saying this. I, Phil Rosenthal was one of the aw most awesome people I've ever known in this business. I was, we were at 9/11 together. We've been to Italy together, New York numerous times. A wonderful man, but I'm going to say this: <laughs> I, I, I never. Phil had a little bit of a problem with me sometimes because I did really teeter on, you know, would she really wear her hair like that? You know, a little too nicely done, a little too quaffed, if you will. Um, and I, I would, I would just try to get away with it a lot because. Here's in my head what I would think, you know. Of course, I knew the character. She was a housewife, frazzled most of the time. 
But I thought people want to see that. Other mothers, other women, they have kids and, you know, stay-at-home moms want to see a little something, just a little oomph, you know? That's what I went for, you know? And I really pushed the envelope quite a few times with Phil. Sometimes we would come out and they'd be like, okay, you know, they say last looks. That's we touch them up just before we're rolling. And I think Phil was so in the script and, and about the story that he'd look up and he'd go, she looks too good. What, what are you doing? You're killing me, Ralphie. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, okay. So we'd go backstage and I literally would like tuck one side of my career <laughs> and just kind of like tossle the, the, the bottom a little bit. And, I kind of, I'm like, you know, I look at him like, he goes, good. <laughs> so I would just, but because really my, as a hairdresser and as a person, you know, who did television, I wanted the, I wanted the other women to look up to like, she's yeah, beautiful. And, oh, maybe I can, you know, blow my hair out that way, you know, and, and, and really that's where I came from. I wasn't, you know, trying to defy, you know. Phil and his stories yeah. and anything, you know, I really yeah. to enhance them, but, uh, but that was my uh, take as a hairdresser is I, I wanted other women to, women to feel good. Yeah. And it, it, Ralph, it's a tough thing because we know my when you're trying, when you're trying to do the story. So if you're, if you want that story to have any weight, you can't have her looking glamorous in this Correct. part if, where she's know, complaining. You don't want to be distracting to the, dialogue yeah. either you know yes so. yeah and i think just for everybody watching we would say every single department takes pride in their work so when they're watching a scene so when the audience watches a scene they're generally watching this is funny and i'm laughing and i like it but all the other departments add up to the experience so when set dress set dressing is looking at the back you're at the at this you know the set you're looking at the hair. The makeup people are looking at the hair. But it, it's got this cumulative effect. But your the hair is the most important part for you that you're looking at, you know? For sure. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And right. I, you know, I wanted, I wanted to please Phil. I wanted to please Patty. I wanted to please the audience. You know, I really felt that sort of responsibility. I mean, I, I love what I do. Um, and I really did feel that sort of responsibility. I see somebody ask that I work. Uh, to the end, right to the end. I did, and only because it's right here in front of me. Yes. Here's the last uh, yeah. DVD, last lab. That was the last episode, I believe, right? Oh, um, well, I took that photo. What you're holding up is the DVD screener that gets submitted for Emmy yeah. uh, and su su submissions. Are you in that photo, Ralph? Or you're this I'm is the not, last? I'm not. Okay. I, I'm in the DVD, though. I, I've seen it. Yeah. So, so that, yeah, Ralph, just for the audience, um, every year you submit, oh, there we go, a signed script. Is that the finale? That's the finale. Look at oh. your, your name's right there somewhere. Oh, yeah, I signed it. Ralph, I'll give you 20 bucks for that right now. We walk away friends. So, um, uh, uh, yes, Ralph was there to the very end. So, um, and uh, you were very beloved. Uh, Ralph, I will say. So, now, Ralph, let's go to some specifics because yep. I put on, let's go right to one that I've been not answering for two years, which is in the lateness episode, Patricia Heaton gets her uh, curling oh. iron, uh, or as Ray calls it, her, her curling pole caught in her hair. So I want to frame this question a little bit uh, because it ties into another question. You get the script when? When do you see the script for the first time? I usually get the script like um, a week ahead of when we're going to shoot it. So okay. if, say, we're shooting Thursday, Friday, I would probably get it the previous Monday, Tuesday. You know, okay. uh, I, I, I'm a week or two before we shoot is when I get the script. And it's usually a draft. Right. And they update and they update and they change the dialogue. And I keep getting, you know, different versions. But you get the gist of what the show's going to be about about a week or two in advance, yes. And then you look through for, oh, now I see the lateness. A, a, a curling iron is stuck in her hair. And what do you do at that point? I really had never, I was a little like, how am I gonna do that? How am I gonna make it stick, stay in her hair? And I remember there was, you know, crazy discussions about it, you know. It, it, it gets a little ridiculous at some points because 
I'm like, if it was actually that stuck in her hair, her hair would have burnt and fa fallen off. I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That stuff, you know, because she gets it stuck in her hair. And so we went back and forth with it. I remember wrapping her hair around it and, you know, teasing it and just to get it all clumped in there. And, you know, take after take after take. I knew we were going to do a lot of takes. So I was like, that's just not going to work. I mean, because every take, you know, it was right here. Then it went to here. Then it fell down here. And, and so what I ended up doing, I was... I remember wardrobe was standing next to me. We were on set and I could see it sliding, you know, we were rehearsing and I saw her, she had her kit, this kit around her waist, you know, a wardrobe, you know, like the thread needle and, you know, a roller brush to get the lint off and blah, blah, blah. And I looked over and I saw a big needle and thread and I'm like, I'm going to sew it into her hair. So I wrapped her hair around the curling iron and then I sewed with needle and thread, <laughs> dark brown thread, and knotted it behind it, you know, and cut it off, and it stayed right there the whole time. The whole time. Yeah. That's how I figured that. Literally, I just looked over. It was like, I'm going to sew it in her hair. What? You know, I was thinking of taping it, all this stuff, and I, I ended up sewing it in her hair. And yeah, that's what worked. Well, and, and what's funny is, as, as great as that scene was, it doesn't work unless you figure that out because it's got to work twice on both takes. And, oh, yeah. and, and I think, great, uh, kudos to you, uh, Ralph, because it, it just worked. It's one of the favorite scenes, and Patty's hair looks great, and Patty looks great, uh, of course, in it. And you take it for granted that uh, you'll figure it out, but had you not... I was nervous. I mean, I was like, how am I going to make this? Because during rehearsals, it, it wasn't staying. And, and I, I think we were shooting it the next day. Yeah, I, I was nervous. I was like, how am I going to make that stay? And <laughs> especially if there's a live audience, you can't have the thing slip out. I mean, it's embarrassing for me. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. I, but I remember, uh, yeah, we sewed it in and that worked. That was and I, Yeah. And I think for those of you that haven't been to the, uh, a live filming, which mo most people haven't, there's as as relaxed as it is during the week and as great as phil was and like per, you know do your best ralph do you do you know we run with it ralph whatever you're doing yes on show night there's a tension because it's the the clock is ticking and you film it and then it has to be perfect and then you film it one more time because you want to move on so anything that stops the production is instant much much more pressure than you would think you do not want to be the person that stops production ever <laughs> ever so yeah. ralph i have a question did you uh and you might not know this but i saved all of the scripts from the wardrobe department and from the props department i have them in my basement they have polaroids uh, stapled to every page where there's mm -hmm. a, a script did you take polaroids of every uh a hair change or no Yes, you have to, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, but I would usually, see, I don't have all those. I, I have some, uh, not a lot, uh, because I turned all those into production at the end of every season. I oh. would put my, you know, um, uh, taped in Polaroids in the scripts. What do we do, 22, 24 shows per season? Yeah. I would turn that stack into production. Okay. Uh, so I don't have a lot of those. Uh, I, I'm shocked. I, I think I just took these for my own, you know, like doubles. So sure. I had well, that. well, I, I can tell you, I mean, people watching know uh, they were I saw Rhonda and Ashley. What are you doing with all these scripts dumpster? And I said, oh, I that'll break my heart. So that's why I took them all. And you so really, you really do have them all in your base. Oh, I have every every iteration of every script from every episode. Yeah. Um, if you want to storm at your house, Ralph, you're welcome to. Um, I'd so, like to go and have some pasta and wine and go through it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that, you're, that you're always invited to. So now, uh, Ralph, there's a few other... Uh, I'm going to show some pictures, which I, which I posted, okay. of, hair, of hairstyles. But what I wanted to ask, I think the viewers would be interested, is you have this great sense of style. You're working on a show that is a pretty mundane yep. household show. So is there a feeling of like, oh, if I could just, you know, I'm not on the, the hippest, latest, you know. For me, no. I, you know, I, I um, 
I always say the best thing about this job is every week is different. It's a different script every week, a different story, same people, right? story. So I, it, it never got mundane. We always have fun, you know, and right. the room is always the room to be in, you know, it, that's <laughs> where all the gossip happens and all the funnies. And, you know, Ray was always, you know, changing lines while he was in my chair when I was, you know, getting him ready, just uh, cutting it or styling it for the day, you know, for the show. Yep. I mean, it's it's just the best place to be. It, it was always that place. No, I it wasn't mundane for me whatsoever. Yeah. But okay. maybe that's why I snuck in the little, you know, a little bit of glamour. Uh, a little bit of creative, yeah. So here, I'm going to hold up this uh, okay. this oh photo here. Hold on. Oh boy, am I going to be? Are you going to embarrass me? No, you cannot be embarrassed, uh, uh, Ralph. Hold on. Let me just get the uh, some of the side uh, stuff to go away. Hold on. Yeah. So I don't know. So that's yeah. a very intense moment. Okay. God, I'm so young. You're still young, Ralph. So that's. But you can see. This is show day. You can tell this is show day because yes. uh, she's right. But look at the focus. Oh, yeah. That's great focus on you. And I don't know what you guys were discussing. But can, can I, I give you a compliment? You were always great at being very, um, how would you say, uh, you know, I, I didn't annoying. know you were in the room. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, it was, nothing was ever posed in your photos, which I always loved. That's why I love your your photos yes well this uh, uh, off of that i will say this was a this i just posted today oh, uh, yeah, I remember. yes that's so that's you gave me this tom yes as a gift one time look at yeah this. there you go there but look how i love patty's laugh i love you pointing at the camera uh uh, uh it, it, yeah that's a great moment and i think for the for the viewer because i i did find um a shot. And then I want to talk back. I want to go back to some hair stuff. Yep. But um, this uh, specific hair stuff, I, I just want to show this like this when, when we were talking about Doris. So that's Kathy yes. uh, who's adjusting Doris's hair because some right. of you had a question about Doris. So that's Kathy who sadly is no longer with us. Yes. Uh, but she did um, uh, the hair. But in that room, Ralph, you experienced, which I, I would go in. I'm looking for a picture of it. Uh, they would do something called a speed through. So for the people watching, a speed through is the the actors would sit there. Elizabeth Herring, who was the um, script coordinator, yep. she was there. And then the actors from beginning to end would run through the entire episode. And so this in few the, people- In the hair and makeup room. In the hair and makeup room. So yep. you had the hair and makeup department. I would go in to take pictures mm -hmm. and Elizabeth Heron and nobody else. And you would watch this, these beloved episodes being run from beginning to end. And it's some of my most fun moments were being in this for this quick little run through of the entire show. Awesome. And it was, yeah. And it, and it was, it was phenomenal. And it's funny because we're, uh, um, we're it's a it's a rare privilege to be doing that okay so this sorry i'm getting a lot of what's uh, with the uh, tongue what's with the tongue over there that's focus that's like michael jordan focus so you that's know, a what we were doing that was a, a flashback we weren't aging him that was a flat we were trying to make him look younger it's when him and deborah met do, do you remember that Tom? yes of course how they met yeah of course with the futon and the thing and the, yep yep yeah. yep Yep. So that's, you're pulling back to de-age him a little. There's tape See, the on the lift, side of his, I, the yep. Lift, the lifts are on the sides just in front of his ear to pull his skin back to make it a little tighter. You know, and young, Ray was young anyway, but we had to make him like, you know, 22 yes. or something like that. Uh, and I think I did a wig on him. Can't remember. So, I, did, yes. I must have done a wig, yeah. You did a wig. Now here's a challenge, Ralph. You have to make Patty look disheveled, but good. That's easy. That was easy. <laughs> well, that was Patty, easy. Patty has, she always makes fun when I, when she sees me, she's like, Tom, you, Patty had great bone structure, has great bone structure. So she yeah. looked great. I love photographing Patty. Uh, and she always, I'll let her tell the story when she's on, but yeah. I always was like, she, she doesn't look, you know, she, she really has no bad angles and that, yeah, that's you adjusting on set. Yep. And what you guys would do is come in between takes and make sure everything looked good. 
That might have been the one thing, the one that uh, Phil's saying it looked too good, so I just tucked it behind her ear once. <laughs> <laughs> it, it could be. So now I have a question. The, I'm repeating the questions from the uh, audience, yeah. but you see a lot of, and I have a picture here somewhere, of you see so a lot of time. Was that the Andy Garcia wig? God, I remember. Yes. <laughs> Ray makes fun. Yeah, Ray makes fun of that. Um, you see the, the, the actors, and here's the photo I was looking for. So this is rehearsal on show day. Yeah, <laughs> in rollers, love it. Right, and so who, I'm gonna roll a bunch of questions in, who's responsible for Monica's hair and like Stefania when she's guesting? It usually was my key. Uh, there was, uh, you know, it was uh, Catherine and then it was uh, uh, another fella. Troy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, usually, it, and if we had more than, you know, more cast than the normal uh, cast, right? You know, a lot of extra actors, then we would hire extra hairdressers. Yes. And, and so there was a question Paula asked how many, how many hairdressers are usually on a show like Raymond? Uh, on Raymond, two. Two hair, two makeup. Yes. I'm two hair, two. Now that there's five hair and five makeup. So, that too, because it's a huge cast. But uh, and what what show is that, Ralph? Because people will ask me. I'm on Bob Hart's Abishola, right? Okay, now. great. Yeah, and I, just, and and I got done with Kaminsky Method, and I was a personal to Michael Douglas. And then there was a whole staff of hair. I think there was four hair, and four makeup, and then Michael had his two personals, a hair and a makeup. I was privileged to be one of them. Um, so it just varies with every show. It just depends on what, yeah. normally, you know, there's a department head hair, a key hair, department head makeup, key makeup, usually. And, and uh, let me scroll through some more uh, questions yep. before we get to the specifics. Uh, sorry, uh, I, I'm gonna show you this one. Oh, that's one of my favorite. I, you know, I know exactly where that, so uh, it was Brad and uh, Monica's marriage, right? Correct. So I was inspired, what inspired that hairdo, which was really, I thought Phil was definitely going to x that for me, uh, was I remember Catherine Zeta-Jones won an Oscar for Cabaret, I believe, and she wore her hair like that, and I copied that hairdo <laughs> for <laughs> Patty others. And I remember I bought 20 real gardenias to put in her hair in case, because I remember I think we pre-taped it the day before yeah. tape night, and then we taped it again on tape night, if I remember correctly. Yes. So I bought all the, I remember it was like production, the producers, uh, you know, I got a little talking to, because I think I spent like $400 on like, you know, single, <laughs> single uh, gardenias. Because uh, I, I just had to be a gardenia for some reason. I, I don't know why that stuck in my head. Uh, so yeah, we did. Uh, I remember I ordered like twenty gardenias to put to you know for take after take after take over two days. But I love that hairdo a lot. That was really a classic one. Patty loved it too. Well, you're getting a lot of hearts uh, if you notice, which means they're loving that uh, discussion. I'll, I'll put up some more uh, pictures of that. Uh, Ralph, let me scroll through some more. Uh, specific questions. I see my uh, aunt. My aunt just joined. Aunt, hi, Auntie. <laughs> hello. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people. Wow, people love that one. Uh, and what? How great to hear. Uh, Derek is saying from Chicago. She won her Oscar from Chicago. Uh, oh, a Chicago. Guy Derek, yes, sorry. Yes. Yeah, a guy Derek who thought you were very handsome and good hair before. Who I think is, uh, yeah, has met you before. So. Uh, Ralph, is it easier? Let me go back. I think Paula had a question. Is it easier to do hair for a character who needs to look like they just woke up uh, or be a mess than making them look good? Is it is it a challenge? I feel like it's. I don't. I don't know if it's more difficult, but you know when it's messy, you know, like it. it, it, it what makes it difficult uh, when it's messy is that there's different takes. You know, you have to go, we call it going back to one. You know, they do a scene, they, you know, cut, and then you go back to the beginning of the scene again, you know, because we shoot it multiple times before we get it right. So, you know, the placement of a messy do, you know, is, you know, oh, she had a big strand over here and a piece over here. And it's, I find it more, uh, much more easy to do a, you know, a, a hairdo that just stays, you know what I mean? Yes. Messy's a little harder. 
Messi is a challenge. Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, Alex Manessis, I guess, has joined. Tom, do you have any photos of me framed? Of course, Alex Manessis. My house is filled with framed photos of uh, who, wouldn't, who wouldn't want that? Was so, that Stefania? Al Stefania, yes, Alex. Um, uh, Alex is very funny, and we love having – she's been on twice, and I would oh, have wow. her on. Oh, yes, God. as, as many time. times. Yeah, she's she, – oh, since you've seen her, yeah, sure. Um, and, uh, Ralph, here's a question going back. Uh, Ray's hair was very short for time, and then he grew it a little bit longer. And this intersects with another question, which is uh, how in real life did the person's hair influence what ended up being on the show? Because they are living their life outside of the show, the human beings, Ray Romano and Patricia Yeah, he yeah. Um, Ray, you know, when I, again, second season, I was a personal to Patty, then third season, I became department head. I, Ray had longer hair when I first started with him on the third season. He had, it was, it was kind of long. And, you know, at the time, you know, everything's really at the time because, you know, that was the 90s and now it's 2022. Right. Um, uh, I cut him really short and choppy and a little, you know, a little messy. I messed him up and did it really short. So he wore it really short uh, for a very long time. And that was a huge change at the time, you know? I remember uh, Phil had to come by while I was cutting his hair for that first time. And, and, and go, oh, okay, you're not gonna go much shorter than that, are you? You know, and I'm like, oh, yeah, well, this is going to match that, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And we ended up doing it. It was over a hiatus, too, I remember, that that between the second season and third season. And because uh, we had to get it approved because, you know, he's he's on camera. And uh, so we we sort of modernized it a little bit. Uh, and then I think by the last season, we kind of grew it out a little bit more. He just wanted it longer. It was a personal choice. So... As far as Ray's concerned, his real life sort of mimicked his character. You know, he wore it that way in real life. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, now I do a lot of wigs on people for that reason. You know, they don't want to cut their hair, color their hair for a character because they have real lives and they, you know, they do yeah. appearances and they go on talk shows and yeah. So on and, and, and of course, Patty was pregnant season three. So there was dealing with that. Yes. Yes. It's, it's, it, it's yeah. Patty <laughs> so, was breastfeeding her child as I was blowing out her bangs. Yes, she yes. Was. And the audience, the audience, <laughs> the audience didn't know. Dan, um, Dan. Yes. Uh, uh, what a great photo, Ralph. And thank you for answering my question from Karen. Uh, did Ray? Did Ray enjoy having his hair done? No. <laughs> so, sorry. Only because I'm friends with Ray. He hates anything makeup hair he is not he, he'd be like anything to not have to put makeup on for a shoot you know and and so yeah so yes. i'm not surprised I, by that I, I always say this with most men you know they like ray didn't like it you know but you know he he sat into it you know and once he got out of it and he saw himself on camera you know he always looked, he never complained about it but you could feel the you know i knew i i had 12 minutes in my head you know like and then, you know, he, I could feel him like, you know, fidgeting, you know, but here, here's a funny, Ray did a, a concert at Carnegie Hall, a, a, I believe it was a stand-up thing. And then they made a CD of it, you know, a CD of uh, the concert. And I made the back cover of the CD, and this is perfect segue for this picture. Um, and th th those are my hands, and this is the back of the cover. There's a uh, Shelly who's makeup, putting his makeup on in my hands. You know, it was all staged, of course. But see how short his hair is. Yes, I loved it like that. I really liked him in that haircut. And so that that's this is this is really Ray, like hating hair and makeup. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, oh, but that's here's the other. Here's the other thing I want to say on uh, about Ray. He he also took us everywhere with him. You know, I flew in a private plane for the first time in my life and. You know, we went to New York and did Letterman and Regis and Kelly. And, you know, we did all this great fun stuff. And, and he always took us with him because 
he did not like hair and makeup, but he didn't want other people touching him. You know what I mean? <laughs> he just wanted, he knew us. So it's like, I might as well bring them, you know? And, yeah. And because of so, it, we had a wonderful, wonderful experience with him. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Patricia Heaton loved you because you did a really good job. Ray liked you because you were, he was comfortable with you and he doesn't care about hair and makeup. And, like, I, didn't, and I didn't, and I didn't stink. <laughs> I always smell it. Uh, uh, Ralph, I know you're going to find this surprising, but we are almost out of time. Okay. Wow. That and went really quick. Yeah. Dude. Yes. So what I think what we have to do is have you back because you have very specific experience because you were with the cast during 9-11. Was. Yes. So I'd like to take time and talk about that. That was uh, an experience. Uh, wow. We yeah. landed September 10th. Yeah. Right. And we... We, I had a ticket for September 12th oh. to go in. So we were, that was the celebration of um, uh, the uh, launching of the Everbose Raymond DVD. Yes. And so you guys went in two days before us. Correct. And so, of course, you went the day before 9 11, and mm -hmm. we had tickets for the day after, and we know what happened on 9 11. So uh, I, I would, I would I love to share that experience because it was life changing and, uh, scary yeah and uh phil was and lisa alfred jackson was they were amazing in getting us out and and there's some great funnies in there and among yeah. the tragedy of it all uh some really funny next stuff. time yeah ne so next time we will it's a little tease let me just race back because the questions disappear when this gets posted so okay people can watch this but the, the questions will go away did patty like doing her hair yes Yes. Patty was a big friend of hair and makeup. Yeah, she was fun. Yeah, yeah. Fun, fun, fun. Yeah, I mean, for a hairdresser, you know, you, you to have an actress who loves to get into it and let's play. And yeah, she was fantastic. Yeah. I, you know, yeah. I used to do all her outside appearances and all that stuff, too. So besides, you know, which was, to me, conservative hair, you know, we got to do really great, fun stuff. Um, outside of it, you know, all yeah. the Emmys and all that stuff. Sure, which we'll, I think we'll get into even more the next Viz as well. And just because I love different opinions. So uh, here's two back-to-back -back almost opinions. Yes, I agree. Ray looked better with short hair. I loved his hair the last season when it was longer. So those are two back-to-back -back <laughs> completely opposite opinions. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, were you un under pressure to do someone's hair as quickly as possible? Yes, uh, always. Stressful, I'm guessing. Yes, always fast. Yes. Um, uh, Ralph, right. how did you meet Patricia Heaton? Well, he met her on the show. No, I met her through Erin, oh. the makeup artist. She she brought me into, the, again, member test run before I actually got on the show. The, the, That's how I met her. Yeah, yeah well, so I... I another makeup artist. Yeah, so Leo, I apologize uh, uh, for the test run. Yeah. And how was Patty... Um, cause I love Patty and she's so much fun, you know, and I always enjoyed uh, talking to her, but was there, there's gotta be a little bit of incredulous that you might screw up her hair. Was it for an, uh, an award you said, or was it something for, else with me? The first time ever. Yes. The test. Oh, uh, I don't, I don't remember really having a bad experience. I remember I did the, uh, Oh, this is, correlates with a question I see in front of me. Uh, I did the pilot for the middle, and we had, I remember the producers of that, we, we had, you know, we did it eight different ways, and, you know, n nobody seemed to be really happy, and we finally got it right at the end, but I remember that being very difficult, uh, w all about her hair. Yeah. Okay, but that that's after she already trusts you and loves you. Oh, yeah, we uh, were. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nine uh, years in by that point or something. Yeah. Like so she she uh, she trusts you. Um, all yeah, right, let me go back. Yeah, let me let me go back to. Yeah, no, I was just saying the uh, uh, from my experience, knowing other uh, people who do talk shows and stuff, often there's a different makeup person because they're not available or hair person. So then they have to bring somebody else in. Yes. Uh, and they not don't necessarily like it or, you know, um, I love the hair in those episodes. Great. Uh, let me just scroll back because when you come back. Um, we're going to talk about 9-11, doing shows, doing other celebrities that you've uh, experienced. Um, let me see. Uh, when you had to change... Okay, let's do this. She wore a wig in the middle. Yes, she ended up wearing a wig in the middle. Yes. I only and, did the pilot. I did not do the show. 
Right. And, and by doing a wig, she must have saved a lot of time. Yes. We encourage wigs. It's, it's, <laughs> they're production friendly. They yes. They are, you know what I mean? If, yeah, it's, it saves a lot of time. So, and a lot of wear and tear on somebody's hair, you know? I mean, you got to blow out and irons and, you know, every day, five days a week. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah. And so there was a question saying, is it easier to work with real hair or a wig? And I guess you've answered it. Somebody's asking about feud. Yes, my, I've only won one Emmy and it was for feud. Uh, congratulations on the Emmy win. Uh, when you say only, Ralph, uh, there's a lot of people who have never won an Emmy. So, um, yep. Yeah. Her, her hair always looks so cute. Little clips and stuff. I loved it. Uh, I was a housewife and did my hair like that a lot. So there you go, Ralph. See, mm. that, thank you. That, that, you I think that's my a, job. Uh, yes, that's, that was the goal. That, that is a good point to close on. Uh, we will, we will, uh, uh, I'm going to have one more sip of coffee from the- uh, Love, Phil. The... Love you, Phil. Mm. <laughs> uh, um, all right, Ralph, I will see you again. All right, Tom. Uh, my people will reach out to you. Okay. And then, and then uh, we'll do this. We'll come back as soon as possible because there's still a lot more questions that we will get to. Uh, and th thank you so much. This will post- and then anybody, you can send it to anybody. Oh, the really? link. It'll post yes. on everybody loves Raymond 360, right? Yes, okay. yes. So thank, thank you to the fans. All these great hair questions coming through. Uh, Patricia Heaton had fantastic hair. Uh, we loved uh, uh, working on the show that comes through. Um, yes, the, the mug. Um, yes, that just flew by today. Thank you, Tom and Ralph. That was awesome. All right. Thank you, Paula. All Thank right. you to so, all the fans. Wow. I mean, I, it, it's been such a long time. And to revisit it is just a pleasure. It was really one of the highlights of my career. And, uh, and thank you, Tom. You were yeah. a great man it's, to be around. Appreciate Ra it. Ralph, you did such a good job. And it's, it's, there's this everybody loves Raymond community. And, they, and even though it's, yeah, even though it's uh, 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 something that, I mean, you've moved on to great success, but you've worked on this iconic show and we're a big part of it and Patty's and Ray's hair, you know, it's, 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 it's a very fulfilling feeling to look back and see all these fans from around the world um, loving Amazing. the show. So, Amazing. Yeah. Uh, all right, Ralph, thank you so much. I'll see you very soon. Thank you, Tom. All right.